Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Hack the Box series. Uh, this is this particular box is going to be part of the OSCP prep series, and uh, yeah, it's a very very simple box, part of the you know the required or the recommended boxes that you can actually go ahead and do on Hack the Box uh, that'll help you prepare for the OSCP. Now you can see this is blue. This is a Windows box, and it's uh, quite easy as you can see. The ratings are primarily saying that it's a piece of cake. Um, the key thing to note here is if we take a look at the matrix, uh, you can see that it's primarily based on CVEs, but um, I think that it's a good uh, you know, box to actually start uh, laying out the fundamentals of Windows enumeration you know, in, all, in, in all stages, uh, especially after exploitation, because I get a lot of questions regarding that. So uh, let's get started now, as I already or usually do. Uh, I already have the nmap scan completed and performed here, so I'll let me just uh, maximize um, or just increase my font size here, and I'll just cut out the nmap results. And you can take a look at my nmap scan for yourself and what I actually ran here. Um, so you can see it's a quite a comprehensive scan. We ran a syn scan, an aggressive scan as well uh, on all ports, and we use the timing template T4, uh, and we output it to this file right over here. All right, and you can see right off the bat, uh, we, we can see that this is going to be primarily a, a basic system, uh, not really running any server based applications. You can see we have RPC, which is, you know, uh, pretty standard on Windows. We also have NetBIOS and SMB and through SMB, we're able to enumerate the operating system version, which in this case, it tells us Windows 7 Professionals build 7601 and the service pack is listed out as there as well. Uh, and we get the work group, the default work group, and that's pretty much it. Um, in regards to the script or the default script scan that was run, which isn't that trustworthy. I know a lot of people actually skip using scripts individually, but this is very important. We'll get to that in a second. So you can see the default script that is run is SMB OS Discovery, and that essentially gives us the SMB version, uh, the computer name, uh, the work group, the uh, NetBIOS uh, computer name, as well as the SMB version. In this case, you can see we have SMB version 2. And that's very important because right off the bat, if you're familiar with Windows based exploits, uh, one of the most popular and common uh, exploits is going to be the eternal blue exploit. Now, again, the, the question arises, how exactly do you check and see if you're the target uh, virtual machine or the target box is vulnerable? Well, there's plenty of ways we can do it. Number one is we can guess and we can go directly into something like Metasploit or the Metasploit console and run the exploit directly. Uh, but it's always important to learn how to use Nmap and Nmap can do this really, really easily. And the way we do this is by, of course, uh, using the, uh, the actual um, CVE name uh, and there's a script for that. And uh, what we can do is let me just say sudo Nmap and we'll say SV because we want to run service version detection here. And the port is going to be port 445 because uh, the Eternal Blue exploit targets SMB. And then we are going to specify the script here. We're going to say script is going to be SMB and that's a vulnerability script. So von and uh, the name of this uh, is going to be MS17010, uh, right? So that is 010 and uh, we, we can hit enter, but we need to enter the IP address, which is 10.10.10.40, I believe. And we hit enter. It's going to ask me for my root password here, which I'll provide. And we'll just let this scan and it should give us uh, you know, comprehensive result in regards to whether or not our target is vulnerable to the eternal blue exploit. Uh, and uh, you can see right over here, it tells us uh, that the script results, uh, that it tells us that this is uh, the, our box is vulnerable to the exploit. It tells us right over a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft SMB version one service and uh, state it gives us the CVE code right over here. And uh, it essentially gives us the references and the disclosure date. So that pretty much means that we can uh, we, we, we can run as uh, the eternal blue exploit. It may be blocked. Uh, however, it, it does look to be vulnerable in this script uh, in my uh, in my own research has proven to be very, very effective because it it actually I believe runs, uh, I believe it actually tests it out, uh, it tests this particular, this exploit out. Now I'm not totally sure about that, we can actually test this by of course, uh, using a tool like Vim, and uh, we can say user share and map and scripts. And we can essentially look for the script name, which in this case is going to be this one right over here. So 
that's an uh, nmap script and uh, we can use and this is within the lua programming language so you can actually go ahead and take a look at what this particular script does and how it actually comes to the conclusion as to whether or not a target is vulnerable um, so yeah you can analyze that for yourself as i said it looks like it actually uh, analyzes the smb headers uh, that are sent back um, right so now that we have that in mind uh, we can you know we because we have smb running i also want to take you through uh, enumerating shares um, and of course if we don't have nfs shares currently active here uh, but we do have SMB, so we can use a utility like SMB client. We can also target RPC because we also have that running as well. Let's just start off with RPC. We can see it's running one port 135, which is uh, pretty standard. Uh, and RPC, we can use RPC client to try and perform a null login. So we can say RPC client, RPC uh, client, and we use the user and just provide a uh, you know null uh, null user. Uh, or essentially perform a null login and then we provide the IP right over here. So we say 10.10.10.40 .10 and we hit enter. It's going to ask us for a password. We can hit a null password and you can see it's going to tell us uh, access denied, which is fine. So we can't uh, get anything from there. However, we can run SMB client to list out all the shares that we have um, or to enumerate all the shares. So SMB client and we use the L option and the IP. So 10.10.10.40 hit enter it's going to ask me for my password my work group password which i will enter and uh, you can see we have ipc which is great we also have the c drive uh, remote ipc we, we can actually target although i doubt it'll actually work we then have the share which is a disk and then the users and then the admin or remote admin which has been added as a comment there so these are all potentially uh targetable shares um that we can uh, that we can target and we can of course try and access them immediately by typing in smb client uh, and then we can uh, specify the ip so we say ip which is 10.10.10.40 and we can then specify the directory in this case it's going to be admin we can hit enter it's going to ask me for my workgroup password here and uh, bad network tree connect failed admin uh, we'll actually provide it in lowercase. We can also try this on the others. Uh, if I try this on the C drive, again, it'll ask me for my password. I should like actually run this normally. We can also try this on the share. I'll show you how to do it through to the uh, to the IPC share shortly. Um, so share, hit enter, and yeah, so we get access to the share. And if we list out the directory. We pretty much don't have anything within the share, which is uh, which is fine. Again, uh, we can see the current directories within the share, and then of course we can try and access uh, the SM. Uh, the, sorry, the IPC. So I'll just exit from here. I doubt we can actually change directories in and out of there. And then of course we try users, um, like so. And uh, yeah, we're able to get access here, and we can see. Uh, that we have access to the default and public. So the default, uh, if we access this here, you can see we go to the desktop um, and we list out the contents there. This is currently the default user account, I believe. So that's under default. Yeah, that makes sense. And if we try public, of course, that's just going to list out the public directory here. So that's essentially what's been shared. And I doubt there's anything interesting here. So we don't have access to any of the users, which is fine, I guess. And we can try and access the IPC share. Um, so we can actually see if we can access that now. So we just say IPC and we hit enter. And yeah, that works out and uh, looks like that is not working out uh, if we list out the help command sorry uh, print the working directory here uh, let me just exit we can actually try and log in because we were able to enumerate the user of this particular computer the user was harris that's pretty much going to be a username so we we, we get we, we we obviously know that that is going to be a possible use on the system and given that this is a window system we know that for sure so you can actually try and log in so we can say something like smb client and if we're logging in then we say uh the ip of course and then the share so 10.10.10.40 um 
and then we provide the share name which is going to be ipc and uh, we'll specify the user as harris and uh well looks like we have an error there smb client um not enough uh backs slashes in the this particular argument here we need to actually provide four there my bad hit enter so it's going to ask us for harris's password here and that's going to give us an uh an invalid login there so again we can just try and log in normally so smb client i know i'm spending quite a bit of time here but again i'm just trying to enumerate as much as i can um so smb client 10.10.10.40 and um hmm. we can actually just provide ipc here so ipc uh, and uh, we then specify the user harris hit enter just enter a null password here we can actually just try and log in directly and it's going to ask me for my password because we don't have the password then it's not allowing any null passwords and yeah we pretty much cannot access that right now so again i'm guessing that's just going to lead to a dead end but regardless it's very important to know how to list out uh shares and uh actually taking you throughout to use smb client quite a bit i can probably make an independent video on this but without that being said we can actually just run uh, msf console and uh, we can then use the eternal blue exploit and let's see if we can actually get access directly and then i'll take you through uh, enumerating uh, you know performing enumeration when you actually have access on the system if this is successful right all right so we'll search for eternal uh, eternal blue and we should uh, use the first one which again it should work on windows 7 and we'll put that in there show the options we set the r hosts to 10.10.10.40 uh, and uh, we want to set the payload as well so set payload windows six, uh with this a 64 bit uh it actually think it might be but we can actually just try this so interpreter reverse tcp let's try that out so reverse tcp so show options and um set the l host if i just one second uh, i have config uh, so sudo if config uh, um, so that is 10.10.14.22 right okay so we can set the l host to that and we can leave the l port to 4444 and let's hit run and uh, it's going to run the auxiliary scan to check if it's vulnerable in this case you can see it is uh, likely to be vulnerable and it's going to start uh it looks like it uh waits for a reply and then sending the smb version 2 buffers and uh, let's see if this works so the eternal blue override completed successfully and um, if we actually get uh, the reverse shell back we should get a interpreter session back which uh, should happen any time now All right, so the exploit uh, ran a few times uh, before actually giving us the uh, the interpreter session. Um, so you can see it actually failed multiple times. I'm not really sure why. Prime, I think it has to do with the interpreter session, but I could be wrong. Uh, that being said, uh, if we list out the system information, so sysinfo, you can see we're running Windows 7 64 uh, bit, uh, the build number is 67 uh, sorry 7601 and that service pack one and uh, the uh, user we're currently logged in as so who am i uh, sorry get user id uh, we actually get nt authority on the system which is we had actually expected some level of privilege escalation um so we can actually test this out but before uh we do anything i just want to see if i can access the course what current directory are we in we're currently on the admin desktop, right? So if we list out the contents here, uh, root.txt, uh, we can actually get the root flag, which is great. Uh, if I just take me a step back into users uh, and we take a look at the users, you can see we have public, the ones we had access to default and public, and then Harris. And sorry, we actually need to go into the desktop. We also want to get the user, so cat uh, user.txt like so 
All right, so both of the flags we were able to obtain quite easily. I'm not really sure why I went to this box quite late. It's primarily because I think we then hacked the box on the list of retired machines. It actually is quite low down there. Um, and uh, I'm just going through these stage by stage. Uh, but I'm just going to take you through some basic enumeration on your Windows systems. Uh, just some quick techniques to get, gather as much information as possible if you were uh, moving on to the privilege escalation stage or you're just trying to gather as much information as possible from the target. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to get into a shell. We're not going to be working with the meterpreter. So we're currently within Harris uh, desktop here. And of course, the first thing we can list out is the system information, right? So system info, we hit enter. System info will give you a lot of useful information about the operating system, which I'll just take you through shortly. It can actually help you quite a bit with privilege escalation because it gives you the various uh, hot fixes that have been uh, enabled or have been installed on the on the box. In this case, you can see we have all the hot fixes and they're listed out right over here, but it gives you a ton of information um like for example the host name the operating system version uh the build type um let's see the processor which is not really relevant here um and of course we have the physical memory the time zone which is quite important the language uh, sorry the system locale and the input locale which can shed light on uh what or, you know whose and what system you're dealing with so you can see in terms of the hot fixes it lists out all the hot fixes that have been installed and their various codes, their KB codes here, uh, which uh, can be very, very useful. So system info is a very, very simple command, but gives you quite a bit. Uh, you can also enumerate your uh, other information uh, regarding who you are uh, or the user currently uh, being used by typing in who am I, which again will just list out uh, the user NT authority, which means we have administrative access Right. Uh, if we want to list out the users and the groups on the system, similar to what you do on Linux, which is very important, we simply type in net users, which will then list out the users right over here. So we have administrator, guest and Harris. Uh, we can also view more information about a user by saying net user and then the username. So, uh, for example, net user Harris. In this case, it tells us the username is set to Harris. The country code is default password last set uh, so again gives you information regarding the password information uh whether there are any log log on scripts added which is you know important and then of course you have the uh the the groups here which again to list out uh we can just say net um net was it net groups or net local groups um net local groups and i uh, believe that was uh that is the command if i'm not wrong um yeah so it looks like it uh it ran successfully but it's uh telling me uh the syntax is net local group so net groups i believe so net group hmm, interesting so uh net group and uh, can only be run by a Windows domain controller. But we, I guess that's perfectly fine. Uh, we can probably list out uh, the group by providing the domain. Uh, but that being said, that will essentially just list out the domain group. So we don't need to do that now. Uh, again, we can run typical Windows commands like IP config to get IP information or any other additional adapters that may be connected. Uh, and of course, uh, you, the other pieces of information that you can enumerate are, for example, if we want to know the host name, we can get the host name, which is just going to tell us Harry's PC, which is quite easy uh, to enumerate. And then, of course, uh, this is just basic enumeration. You can then start using the met, uh, some of the Metasploit modules, the post-exploitation modules that are very, very helpful. Um, so again, if we just exit out of this, uh, we can just say terminate that channel and uh, we can just put this in the background so we can use some of the post exploitation modules as i mentioned um so there are plenty it all depends on what you're trying to do uh, of course number one you could be trying to you know trying to gather credentials or password hashes which is uh, again quite important then of course um you might be trying to perform privilege escalation in that case uh, you can use the uh, windows exploit suggester and of course, then you, there, there's tons of other ones. Uh, you can essentially just search for the ones you're looking for and they're all found or they're all categorized within uh, the Metasploit module uh, category structure. So again, if I say use uh, and I say um, post and we're targeting Windows and if we want to perform, uh, you know, we can just list out the directories. Yes, you can see there's quite a few 
uh, we can gather, we can uh, escalate, so on and so forth. But I'll just take you through some of the most common ones. Um, just briefly, if I just uh, list out my sessions here, yeah, so sessions one, and uh, we, if I say something like get system, which I already have, uh, so this shouldn't give us anything. So you can see, uh, because this is quite an old operating system, we got it through the first technique. If I say get hashes, is it get hashes or dump hashes? Uh, hash dump, I believe. Uh, so there we are. You can see it actually gives us the hashes straight out of the box, uh, which is actually quite uh, it's quite shocking. This, as I said, this is quite an easy box, but uh, you can actually run some of the other ones. So background, um, if we want to perform, for example, um, let's say we're looking for, we can just search for the exploit suggester. So suggester, we can use the local exploit suggester and we just say use and we say show options, right? And we set the session to one and we hit run. This is essentially going to look for exploits, uh, you know, kernel level, etc., uh, that, you know, can help us escalate our privileges on the target box. And again, this is a great utility if you're not familiar with, uh, you know, the particular versions of Windows and what exploits affect them or what vulnerabilities uh, affect them. So it's a great way of, of actually going through a, a list of some of the exploits that um, that your that the box might be vulnerable to. So we want to give this a few seconds. Um, so as I said, you can see it actually gives us the potential list of exploits that uh, might give you, you know, uh, might, might actually allow you to escalate your privileges. Uh, that being said, I'll, I'll, I think I'll be covering this in later videos when we talk about Linux and Windows privilege escalation. Uh, but now I'm just focusing on enumeration. Um, some of the other enumeration modules within Metasploit are things like uh, the uh, credential collector. Um, so you can actually search for that. So search uh, credential. Um, let's just search that might be too wide. Um, uh, credential collector, and we hit enter. Yep, that's the one we're looking for. So this allows us to gather Windows credentials. And then of course, we can say use and uh, whoops, my bad. Uh, we can actually just uh, that is my VPN connection. Let me just go back to Metasploit. That's under the first session here. Uh, right, so use, I'm going to paste that in there, show options, and uh, we can then set the session to one and it run. And it's going to run the module. And in this case, you can see that uh, it gets the hashes for the particular user accounts, and then it collects all the tokens um, that currently exist within memory, I believe. Uh, I believe that's how it's still uh, the technique that is used is uh, done through memory. Um, but there you go. Uh, we can see that that works as well if the um, hash dump utility within Meterpreter didn't work. Um, so there's a, f a few others that I, I like using quite a bit. Um, uh, however, I think I'll be covering them as we move along uh, with, you know, privilege escalation. Uh, that's just a basic introduction to, you know, Windows enumeration. Hopefully this video was useful to you. As I said, this video is not really targeted uh, or was not really focused around this particular hack the box box. It is primarily uh, focused on, uh, you know, giving you an introduction to Windows enumeration uh, in, in regards to, uh, you know, performing information gathering and then enumerating as much information as you as possible uh, from the system, uh, you know, from the outside. And then of course, once you have access or once you have foothold, a foothold, uh, you then learn about local enumeration. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, again, as I said, this is uh, I haven't ha had everything laid out uh, yet. So I'm going to be working on more videos that will cover more advanced techniques. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace. I just want to take a moment to thank all our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash hackersploit for all the support. Your support and help is truly appreciated. You keep us making a newer and fresher and better content. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all the Patreons. Um, so thank you, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, Michael Hubbard, and Jerry Speds.